the ball. You're familiar with the tale of Skull and Haughty, bringers of day and night. Oh yeah, the wolf giants. Aye. They were born of the archwolf Hroth Whitnir, a great nemesis of the Aesir gods. Odin captured them as pups and kept them in the kennels of Asgard to hold his foe at bay. But when the sun and moon grew mutinous and stood still, Odin put Skull and Haughty to use. With his ancient magics, he cast the wolves to the heavens, and they began their chase. And long shall they chase, but not endlessly. For it is foretold that someday Skoll and Haughty will catch and devour their prey. And that day shall be Ragnarok, the twilight of the gods. I'm sure it's nothing. He just said the boy seemed familiar to him. Me? That's impossible. Though I quite agree. Unless, perhaps, he refers to something yet to be. It is said that when Jormungandr and Thor battle at Ragnarok, their clash so violently shakes the tree of life that it splinters, casting the serpent backward through time, even before his own birth. What? That is madness. Well, I did say not to concern yourself. The giants hold the key to changing his fate when Ragnarok comes. They are the Aesir's oldest enemies, after all. And it's their army that's supposed to do him in in the end. He was in a pretty big battle. Odin's there, Thor, even the World Serpent. Oh. Thor must have smashed his head apart. See? But look! Hrungnir's body squished him. Idiot. Rungnir, you see, was born with neither head nor heart, so the giants had to complete him with stone. He was strong, to be sure, but also a perfect simpleton. Odin met him wandering in Midgard one day, 
found him so amusing, so harmless, so gullible, that he invites him back to his palace in Asgard. There he gives Fungnir his fill of mead, and goads him into all manner of boasts and antics, all for the amusement of the court. I was there. I saw the Aesir laugh as Hrungnir leapt upon his shield and swore he'd kill us all and take our womenfolk back to Jotunheim. Then Thor shows up. Does he laugh? Oh no. Thor takes one look at the drunken stone buffoon and brings down Mjolnir on his head so hard that he's got chunks of Hrungnir in his own skull to this day. Thor is so startled by the face of rock. He doesn't notice Hrungnir's body topple right onto him with a sickening crunch. And again, the roars of laughter echo through the palace halls. Thor killing them. Imagine that. to say. Six? Seven? Eight? Could he shoot four bows at once? More of a swordsman. He did only have the two eyes. It looks like Thor come down to size. It's what he does. He surrounded Starkad, showered him with arrows until he was brought to his knees. He surrendered, hoping by trial he could clear his name. Thor took advantage and ripped off one of Starkath's arms. It only made it easier to sever another and another until he was satisfied. Relieved of six arms and too much blood, Starkath perished upon the battlefield. Another weapon, the bane of giant kind. They made Thor's hammer? I don't think they'd like this. Oh, I should say not. But this was long ago, and they were eager to make a name for themselves. Rather overdid it with that one, methinks. an original. He makes a flaming sword. A weapon of legend. He fights Thor and Odin. But is that the past or the future? Hmm. That may be a matter of perspective.
about a giant lady. Lots of books and visions. Ah, that big Goa, the knowledge keeper. She was a gifted sorceress, who gathered every tome of arcane wisdom she could find in the realms, all in the hopes of augmenting her powers of prophecy, that she might find her lost husband, our Vandil. But it was not her husband she would glimpse in her visions, for it was Groa, seeing longer and farther than any before or since, who witnessed Ragnarok, the end and the beginning. This is your story. That mother was a giant, which makes me part giant and part god. And part mortal. Right. I guess there's just one thing I don't understand. My name on the wall. The giants called me 
Hoki? Hoki. That's the name your mother wanted for you when you were born. She must have called you that to her people. Very giant, giant. Who, despite his mountainous size, was without question the greatest stonemason this world had ever seen. Proud Thamur hoped to one day pass his vast knowledge onto his son. But young Harimthur had the heart of a warrior. Perhaps the father had too much fear in him, or the son too little. Either way, a quarrel of theirs spiraled out of control, and the overworked stonemason bombed! Struck his son. Arimthur ran off into the night. Feeling shame and regret, Thamur chased after his son. But in his emotional state, soon found himself wandering Midgard, lost and alone. Sadly, he caught the eye of the one person he didn't want to meet alone that night. So far from home. Thor. After completing his father's masterwork, the Great Wall of Jotunheim, I thought of nothing but making the Aesir pay for their crimes against the giants. Once, he longed to fight Thor, but tragedy had brought wisdom to Hrithor and Thor. He observed that Asgard's walls were half-built and shoddy, for no Aesir god could be bothered with such tiresome labor. So Hrithor adopted the guise of an ordinary man and made the Aesir an offer. He would build them majestic new walls, and if he couldn't build them within two turns of the season, they would owe him nothing for his labors. And if he succeeded, he asked only for an audience with the goddess Freya. Odin agreed, knowing the task was impossible, but intrigued by the stranger. I mean, made short work of it, of course. He had the benefit of his father's training and the aid of a magical stallion for fetching stones. Odin was not happy to find himself on the losing end of the wager, but he seemed to uphold his end of the bargain. Freya was sent to meet the mason, and to her surprise, he wanted only to whisper something in her ear. That being done, he made his way out of Asgard, and when he found Thor awaiting him at the gates of Midgard, he knew he had been double-crossed. But he didn't care, because his plan was complete. It was? What did he say to Freya? Only she could say for certain, but I've had many moons to work it out. Harimthur knew that Freya loathed the Aesir, despite her marriage to Odin, and I believe he gave her the secret to Asgard's defences. Some weakness. 
this. He may have built in structural or magical, which I expect will be exploited come Ragnarok when Surtur arrives to burn Asgard to ash. If not sooner. My stroke. This is the big. Stop saying that. Oh, you're making me very nervous. It was bound to snow sooner or later. That ain't just snow when you know it. It's the end times. So, if you're heading home, try to keep moving and also to not die. Or if you're not heading home, same advice.